Hi everybody and welcome to the video for task 2.4. In today's task, we are going to be working on graphing a linear function given an equation of the linear function. So we're going to be in your packet, but we're actually not going to start taking notes today on the very first page of the task. We're actually going to flip to the third page. So we're going to be on this page that looks like this. The big theme of what we're doing today is if we have an equation, can we make a graph by identifying key features in the equation that will help us make the graph without needing to make a table of values? So in the past, when we've looked at equations of lines, we've often said that the equation of a line looks like this. It usually starts with f of x equals, it could also start with the letter y, and that would be the same thing. And then we usually say that the first number in the equation is the starting output value. After you have the starting output value, we usually say that you're going to see a plus or a minus depending on whether the pattern is adding or subtracting. And then you're going to see the slope in the equation. Then there's going to be a parentheses with an x. And depending on the starting x value, you might either see just an x or you might see x minus the starting input value. So if our table, for example, started at 1, we would have written x minus 1 there. And what we're going to talk about right now is sort of a different way of writing the same thing that uses a shortcut notation. So today we're going to talk about something called point slope form of the equation of a line. What this means is it's an equation where we're going to be able to see the starting point and the slope just by looking at the numbers in the equation without having to make a table of values. Here's how we usually write point slope form. We usually write either f of x or y equals, now instead of saying starting output value, we usually use the symbol y1. And y1 represents the starting output value. It's just faster to say y1, which stands for the first y value, y value number one, than it is to say starting output value. So it's sort of a shortcut way to write it. Then we say that you're going to see plus or minus m. And the reason we use the letter m is because as we've discussed, m is the letter we use to stand for slope. Then we would say parentheses x minus, and instead of writing out starting input value, we usually write x1, which stands for the first x value. And this would be the starting input value. An example of how this equation might look would be like this. You might see an equation that says y equals and then 7 plus 3 parentheses x minus 4. In this equation, if I was looking at this equation, I would be able to tell that this graph, the starting point had a y value of 7 because that's the starting output, that had an x value of 4 because that's the starting input, and then the slope was positive 3. So I can kind of just look at the numbers and figure out the information that would have been in the equation without having to really do any work. Now what you should also know is that sometimes we rearrange the order of this equation just a little bit. 
So I could take this exact same equation and rearrange the order. All that I'm going to do is I'm going to move the starting output to the end. In that case, the three would be first. And then I would still have parentheses x minus 4. But then instead of having the plus 7 at the beginning, I would just have that 7 at the end of the equation. These two equations mean the same thing. It's just that some people prefer to put things sort of in that order where the x and the slope are first versus having the x and the slope come at the end. So again, these two equations mean the same thing. All I did was take the order of the equation and flip it around. Now let's talk about again and formally write down what all of these different pieces of the equation represent. In the equation, we said this number right here is going to be m. It's going to represent the slope. Now, slope can always be found by doing rise over run or by doing change in y over change in x. In the equation, the slope will always be multiplied by the parentheses. So you'll notice the slope is always outside of the parentheses. Whether the parentheses is the first thing in the equation or the second thing, the slope is always the number that's multiplied by the parentheses. Now, the second piece of information that you're going to need to know how to find in the equation, know what you're looking at, is the x1. In this equation, we're using the symbol x and then 1 to stand for the x-coordinate of the starting point. Think about this as literally the first x value on the graph. This value will always be inside the parentheses by the x. So it's always going to be inside. In this case, it's inside the parentheses, no matter whether the parentheses is first thing in the equation or second. And then the x1 value is always the opposite of the number that you see. For example, in this equation, even though it says that the, the x is being minus 4, because we know that when we write equations, a minus 4 in the equation meant that there was actually a positive 4 in the table, then in the starting point, it would actually be a positive 4 as your starting x value instead of a negative 4. So even though that this looks like a minus 4, it would actually be a positive 4 in your starting point because when we create our equations, we put x minus whatever the starting number was. It's always the opposite. The last piece of this equation is the y1, and the y1 represents the y-coordinate of the starting point. Literally, this stands for this first y value. It's just shorter to write y number one than it is to write first y value. This value will always be a separate term from the parentheses. So you'll notice that in both of these equations, the y value is added or subtracted. It is separate from the parentheses. It's not inside the parentheses. It's not multiplied by the parentheses. It's just a separate number. The y1 value is always the same as the number you see in the equation. So in this case, the starting point would have a y value of 7. If you see a positive 7, you use a positive 7. Now, all of this is kind of an interesting way of going backwards from what we've already done. In the past, we've written equations that look like this. Now we're going to be given equations that look like this, and we're going to be asked to figure out what was the starting point in the table? What was the slope we found in the table? So let's practice doing that. In the next few problems, we're going to practice identifying the starting point and the slope by looking at the equation. So the first thing is a starting point has two pieces. A starting point is always going to have an x, and it's always going to have a y coordinate. In this equation, I can find the x coordinate of the starting point by looking inside the parentheses next to the letter x.
If it says positive two inside of that parentheses, then my starting point would actually have had a negative two as the X. It's always the opposite of what you see in the equation. Now the Y value would be the number that is a separate term from the parentheses. So in this equation, that would be the number three. It's actually separated from the parentheses by a plus or a minus. So I would put the number three here, and this is always going to be the same number you see in the equation. So my starting point would have been negative two comma three in my table. The slope is always the number that is multiplied by the parentheses. So in this case, it would be negative one. And since slope is rise over run, if I wanted this to look like a fraction, which would make graphing the slope easier, I could always put over one here because anytime you have a number and you divide by one, it doesn't change the value. Now, one of the things we've talked about throughout this unit is this idea of increasing or decreasing. In this case, I could say that this was a decreasing function, meaning that the graph will be going downhill because the slope is negative. If the slope was positive, I would be able to say that this was an increasing function. The graph would be going uphill. Let's try this again. So we have a different equation. We're going to find the starting point and the slope. Now I'm going to put a parentheses and I'm going to kind of prepare to write down the starting point. The starting point has two pieces. It has an X coordinate and it also has a Y coordinate. In this equation, the x coordinate of the starting point is going to be inside of the parentheses by the letter x. So x is next to x. In this case, it says minus 5. So we're going to use the opposite of that number, which is positive 5, because in this case, that means that the table would have started with positive 5, and that's why we wrote a minus in the equation. The y coordinate of the starting point is always going to be a separate term from the parentheses. So in this case, that would be the minus one, and we keep this number the same. We leave it the same as we see it in the equation. The slope will always be the number that is multiplied by the parentheses. So in this case, it would be the positive three over five. Now it's already a fraction, so I'm not gonna worry about sort of adding anything to make it a fraction which means that this graph would be increasing. It would be going uphill because the slope is positive. In this equation, very similarly, to find the starting point and the slope, I would need to find the x coordinate of the starting point and the y coordinate of the starting point. Now, in this equation, to find the x coordinate, I would just look inside of the parentheses by the letter x. In this case, it says positive 1, so I know that the starting x would be negative 1, because for x, it's always the opposite of what you started with. For the y coordinate, I would look for the number that is a separate term than the parentheses, which would be, in this problem, the negative 6. My slope would be the number that's multiplied by the parentheses. So in this problem, it would be the negative one half. I would therefore be able to say that this graph is a decreasing function because the slope is negative. Okay, so now that we know how to find all of this information in an equation, let's actually practice making a graph of the equation once we have that information. So on the next page of your notes, we're gonna take this one step further. We're actually going to find the information from the equation and then make a graph using that information. So when I see an equation like this, where I've got a parentheses and a y equals, this is what's called point slope form. It means I should be able to find a starting point and a slope just by looking at the equation. In this case, to find the starting point, I know that I'm going to need an x coordinate and a y coordinate. In this equation, I can find the x coordinate by looking inside of the parentheses by the letter x. Since there's a positive 2, I know that my starting x coordinate would have actually been negative 2, the opposite. I can also find the starting y coordinate by looking at the number that is separate from the parentheses, which is negative 3.
my slope is always the number that's multiplied by the parentheses, which is 3 over 4. Now, how can we use this to actually make a graph? Well, we can use this by graphing the starting point on the graph. So the point negative 2, negative 3 would be negative 2 for x, negative 3 for y. It would be right here on the graph. Then I can use my slope to get more points graphed. So my slope is going to tell me rise over run. Since the top number here is positive, I'm going to rise 3. And the bottom number is positive also. So I'm going to go to the right for spaces. So starting from where you put your starting point, you would count up 1, 2, 3 spaces. And then to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. And that's your next point on your graph. Now we can continue to do that. So we can go up 3, right 4, up 3, right 4, until we run out of room. And then we can just draw a nice straight line through our points. Let's graph one more. So I'm going to find my starting point and I'm going to find my slope. That's how I get started so that I have stuff to graph. The x coordinate of my starting point would be the number inside of the parentheses by the letter x. Since it says negative 1, I know that that should actually be a positive 1. And my y coordinate would be negative 2. So since it says minus 2, I know that I'm going to keep that a minus 2 because y is always the same as whatever you see. And my slope is going to be negative 1 third. Now when I write down my negative 1 third, you'll notice I'm being careful to put the negative on the top only. When your slope is negative, you're always going to put the negative on either the top or the bottom, but never on both. So in this case, I'm putting it on the top. I like to always put the negative on the top. It just makes my life easier. To graph this, I'm going to start with my starting point. So I'm going to go to the point 1, comma, negative 2 on the graph. So x is 1, y is negative 2. From there, I'm going to use rise over run to get more points on the graph. Since my number on the top is negative, I'm going to go down one space this time. And since the number on the bottom is positive, I'm going to go to the right three spaces. So down one, right three. And I put some more points on the graph. I'm going to continue to do that. Down one, right three. Down one, right three. Now I should mention that when you run out of room, you can definitely go backwards using the same pattern. You just reverse your directions. So instead of down one and right three, I would go up one and left three. You'll notice that this point still lines up with the other ones. I'm just going backwards by reversing both of my directions. Finally, I'm going to draw a nice straight line through my points so that I have a graph of my equation. All right, that's it. Now we know we can graph a line without making a table of values by just identifying the starting x, starting y, and slope, and therefore we can use that to graph our equation. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you soon for some extra practice.